Okay, for the pistons, I'm going to do two separate smart materials. I'm going to do one for the, uh, the larger section and then one for the narrower section. I'm not sure what the technical terms for those both are. I am not an engineer. But uh, for the larger sections, I'm going to use some kind of a, uh, a different style of paint. It's going to be black, but it's also going to be much smoother than the paint we used on the rest of the model. It's going to be a lot, uh, it's going to have a much sharper highlight. It's going to be shinier. And then for the, for the narrower section, I'm going to use some more, something that looks a little bit more like uh, brushed steel rather than just the dirty generic metal I've got on there right now. So let's focus on the, uh, the main sections first. So I'll make a new smart material here. I'll call this one piston. Actually, I'm going to call this one slightly different. I'm going to call this one hard paint because I'm not just going to use it on the pistons. I'm also going to use it for the uh, for the hands that we've got down here. So the first thing is that it's going to be black. I'm not going to make it completely black because that tends to uh, not show up very well. It tends to You tend to lose lighting information with that. So I'm going to make it just a little bit brighter than pure black. And then for the roughness, I'm still going to use a texture just to uh, break it up a little bit, but it's not going to be very pronounced. Probably go back to grunge Pick maybe this one. There we go, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? And I'll just reduce the roughness way down. Something kind of like that. Yeah, you know what, I'll do it. I'm going to add on a layer of dirt to the areas that are high in ambient occlusion, so that'd be more in shadow. No metalness, lots of roughness. It's going to be kind of a dark, desaturated brown. Okay, so let's go texturing that. We'll start here back on the main arm. And also another uh, tip, um, just something I thought of just for demonstration's sake, uh, if I were to draw using one of these shape lassos right here, just real quickly, you see how there's a bit of a smooth fall off between where I actually drew the line and where the material is strongest? That's because the shape lassos have this border width. Um, so just to, to give you an idea, if I draw one right here, if I take that border width and reduce it down to one, you can see one of them is a lot harsher than the other. So on a model like this where my UV shells are really, really close together, uh, I actually want to keep that border width down really low uh, just so I don't accidentally paint onto a UV shell I, don't, I didn't mean to paint. Okay, all right. Now let's continue. Okay, I also just realized that I've been painting these pistons onto the rubber layer, which is not where they are supposed to be. Uh, thankfully though, there isn't a whole lot of, there isn't actually any uh, overlap between these two layers. They are painted on completely separate objects, so so moving them, or if I needed to erase from the rubber layer, it wouldn't interfere with the pistons, but do make sure that you are painting on the right layers. And I also just noticed right here that it looks like I got a little bit of the rubber layer where it wasn't supposed to be. 
you see that. So really quickly, I'm going to go and fix that. It looks like it's, yeah, these little black streaks right here. I am, however, going to keep painting on this rubber layer for the remainder of the, uh, the pistons just so that it all stays organized. So I may call this rubber slash pistons. All right, we are certainly getting there, making progress. So now while I have this same smart material active, I'm going to use that for the hands that we have down here. It's gonna be a very similar process to filling the pistons. It's just gonna be uh, doing it on the hands instead. And I will probably need to erase the normal map from the base metal here as well.